tell me how, about how Cummins became involved in the project. So, um, according to, to Norbert, he was walking, um, I believe, the Ag in Motion show. Maybe don't quote me on that. But a trade show that Cummins was at three years ago um, and had a conversation with one of our Cummins Western Canada uh, sales representatives, Dan. And they had a kind of long, in-depth conversation about... I don't, I don't think it was the specifics of the project, but about Cummins and how we work and um, what we could potentially offer, and I think that was the, the, the birth of the, the next steps. So this is using the, the 4.5 uh, liter Cummins? Yes, QSB 4.5. And now that's a, not an un, unusual or not an uncommon engine to find in ag machinery. Was there any difficulty in require any uh, computer software management to fit this project, or was it pretty much a drop-in? For the most part, it was a drop-in. Um, I know that our application engineers uh, worked really closely with the DOT team in terms of the packaging requirements and making sure that the, mach that the engine would be able to integrate with the technical requirements of the machine in terms of speed and torque, and um, but in terms of unique requirements that it drove to the engine. I'm not aware of anything in particular. So this is a 173 horsepower flywheel? Yes. So uh, with the uh, discussion here earlier, they were talking about fuel consumption at under three gallons per hour. Is, was that, is that a surprise to you at all? Uh, yes and no. Um, it, it's not a surprise in terms of we spent so much time optimizing the engine integration that it's not a surprise, but I think when you talk about how adept their software is in managing the machine and optimizing out in the field um, to drive just those those small consistencies that can really add up over acreage, uh, I think that's really shown through in some of the major fuel economy gains that we're seeing with this. Tell me about the emissions system. This is a Tier 4 final? It is a Tier 4 final machine, yes. Um, so for our machines right now, we have stage five platforms that are available. Um, this is a tier four final installation. Our stage five has a single module after treatment. This is um, a slightly more complicated configuration, um, but we were able to, to make the packaging work and be able to meet the, the highest requirements and, and help them make sure that that wasn't a, an issue because in terms of um, what DOT's trying to do, they need a, a, a solution that's going to drop in for them. I'm assuming this is the only uh, autonomous vehicle, at least in the agriculture sector, that Cummins is involved with. It's actually not. Uh, we power the Gus Autonomous Sprayer with our V6.7, um, and we were just there at World Ag with that machine as well. So you've got some experience in blending engines to autonomous machines. We do, and it's an area that we're really excited about, um, and we think that how we're structured as a company and all of our expertise with the almost you know, 1.4 million engines that we sell, uh, that, that we're well positioned to be able to serve this market. And Cummins turns 100 this year. We do, yes. It is our 100th anniversary, um, and you know, today we were talking a little bit about our very first engine went into a water pump, um, and so it's, it's pretty great to be having our 100th anniversary, but also having been involved in ag for that long as well.